What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So today I wanted to give you all an update on the conclusion of my 2023 competitive Pokemon season. So if you've been following me on Twitter or following Japan Nationals at all, uh, you may already be aware, but unfortunately I did not qualify for Worlds this year. Uh, actually, I did not even get a chance to compete in Japan Nationals as I wasn't even allowed. So um, this video is going to talk about you know what all transpired this year with Japan Nationals, uh, as well as give you guys an update on what you can expect from me moving forward. So I'll start off, uh, of course, if you've been following the whole saga out here, um, the Japanese circuit, as well as the circuit across all of these Asian countries, has been a total disaster. Uh, I originally qualified for Worlds, then unqualified for Worlds, and this whole thing has just been a total mess. Um, but anyway, heading into Japan Nationals, basically what the Pokemon Company uh, planned on using was this new beta spectator mode that they developed. Um, you know, still in the beta phase, so has a number of issues, which uh, we're going to get to. Um, but basically, TPCI is not using this uh, you know, beta spectator mode because obviously it has issues, so they're not using it. So their in-person tournaments run completely differently. Worlds, which is going to be handled by TPCI, luckily is uh, you know, not going to use this spectator mode, so going to be uh, run you know, in the hands of TPCI and run a lot better. Um, now, don't get me wrong here, we do actually, you know, really badly need a spectator mode, but, um, you know, if it's not in a complete state where it's ready to be used in official tournaments, then it probably shouldn't be used until it's, you know, actually done being developed and going through all the QA and it's got all the issues uh, taken care of, but uh, what can you do? You know, this TPC, they wanted to use their spectator mode, so here we are, but basically what this spectator mode requires is basically the in-person tournament is still essentially an online tournament so you register for it in the battle stadium online the way you would for the global challenges and the issue with that which i unfortunately came to find out is if you qualified from you know the previous online tournaments it was actually not tied to your Nintendo account, which is, you know, kind of the assumption I had, um, but it's actually tied to your game cartridge, your save file. And so if you start a new game, you are now not even allowed to compete in uh, the next stage of Japan Nationals. So yeah, that's basically what happened. I started a new game because my previous save file was in Japanese in order to avoid all of the scouting that goes on here which, you know, it happened in the West too for the in-person events before we had open team sheet. You know, players with their friend groups might share information about teams of players they played against. Uh, of course, now with open team sheet, that kind of scouting uh, advantage is almost completely gone. Of course, there are still small things like EV spreads you can kind of infer maybe, uh, or booster energy stat boost that, you know, you can relay on to friend groups. But for the most part, Open Team Sheet kind of takes care of that whole issue. Uh, but of course, out here with the online tournaments, there's no Open Team Sheet, no nothing. Um, that issue is still everywhere. And so what the players all do is they all use the same, not everybody, but most players will use the same trainer name, like default Scarlet or Violet as their trainer name. So that way, when you're playing against somebody, you don't know who it is um, because, you know, everybody's got the same trainer name. So it's a lot harder to, um, you know, scout somebody when their trainer name is the same as everybody else's. So instead of entering the tournament as the lone English cartridge game where it's so obvious that, you know, they're playing against me. And so it would be a lot easier to scout and then tell friends, you know, here's what this, here's what Ray's using, blah, blah, blah. I played the game in Japanese. My Japanese is good enough where I can play the game in Japanese. And since it's online, any you know specific moves or things that I don't know, uh, I can just Google and see what the English translation is. And uh, that actually did come up. There were a few times uh, in the qualifying rounds where a player might use a move into my protect, and I don't know what that move is. And so I have to like you know search Bulbapedia or something. Okay, what's this move in English? Um, but of course, when you're competing in person then you can't do that. So yeah, I have to play the game in English. I don't want to, you know, be in a scenario where somebody uses a move against me and I don't know what it is. And so that might, you know, cost me a game. 
and <laughs> when it's best of one and closed team sheet and everything. I just don't have that information. And so I wanted to play the game in English. Um, and then also, uh, one of the Pokemon I was considering using for the online round of Japan Nationals was a zero speed IV trick room Ting Lu. Um, I didn't end up using it, but it was one of the things I was closely uh, considering testing. And so I figured heading into uh, the in-person stage of Japan Nationals, I wanted to have that zero speed IV Ting Lu available in case I did decide to end up using it in the next stage. So another reason to reset the game and try and get that zero speed IV Ting Lu. Uh, I didn't think anything of it because the next stage was going to be an in-person event. They hadn't sent out any you know, instructions or rules or anything saying, you know, you have to keep your same save file uh, if you want to compete. Um, nothing like that. So start a new game, didn't really think anything of it. Worst case scenario, if, you know, it's tied to my Nintendo account, so they're going to know it's me. Um, so just didn't think anything of it, started a new game after I qualified um, so that I could, you know, get the English language because for some reason you just can't change your language in these games without starting a brand new game. So, uh, uh, yeah, so that's what I did, and unfortunately the spectator mode, because it requires online registration, and it is completely tied to your save file, not Nintendo account, not anything else, so uh, the tournament, when you go searching for the tournament to register, it doesn't even show up, and so I was not even allowed to enter. Uh, I sent an email to the Pokemon company, and I got a response the, the next day, so... Um, I didn't really expect them to, to do anything or be helpful, and that's basically what happened. Their email just said, um, you know, there's nothing we can do. The rules that we sent on June 1st, which, by the way, uh, I qualified on May 14th, and they sent the rules on June 1st, which was a week before Japan Nationals, whereas the two weeks after I qualified, we didn't have any rules um, saying, you know, you can't start a new game. And so by the time they sent out these rules that you know, actually, to their credit, did say that you can't start a new game. Um, if you do that, then you can't register. So the rules actually did say that. Um, but we didn't have those rules until a week before Nationals. And then the two weeks after I qualified, there were no rules saying don't do that. So, um, yeah, uh, that, I, that was what I responded with after their email just said we can't do anything. The rules say that you can't start a new game or else you're not going to be allowed to compete. And so I just responded, you know, I was frustrated, of course, even though I knew they wouldn't be able to help or do anything. So I responded just saying, well, I qualified on May 14th. You sent the rules on June 1st. Well, what about that whole two week period in between where you didn't send any rules saying don't do this? Um, you know, I'm, I just sent all that in the email, mentioned how, well, the in-person tournaments everywhere else in the world don't have this stipulation Worlds doesn't have this stipulation. I was, you know, frustrated. I knew they couldn't do anything, but I just wanted to voice my frustrations. And they actually responded a week later. Um, so first response was a day later. The next one was a week later, which, again, it's not like they could have done anything. It's not like my email really was super urgent, so whatever. Um, but they just responded a week later saying, you know, you're just out of luck. There's nothing we can do. Nationals is over. You started a new game too bad. So uh, that's what happened. Um, it definitely is extremely frustrating to go out this way. Um, it's actually one of the reasons this video I'm posting like a week and a half after the fact. Um, I wanted to let some time pass so that my frustrations could kind of simmer down a little and I don't say something that I might regret later. Um, but even now it's still incredibly frustrating to have my season ended in that way, um, especially with the way this entire circuit and, you know, I really shouldn't be calling it a circuit. It's kind of insulting to the circuit that TPCI puts on, which is incredibly well run. Um, but what, I guess, circuit they put on over here, um, just frustrating to see it end that way with all of the disasters that have happened to, up till now across Asia. And then to just see it in this way. I mean, it's really kind of fitting, honestly, for how much of a disaster these TPC run tournaments have been. Um, but yep, that is how my season ended. So I will not be competing at Worlds, unfortunately. Um, but looking forward, I am, it's weird, right? Half of me is like totally not motivated at all to be even 
attempting to play this circuit seriously out here in Japan. I mean, it's just so terribly run. Um, part of me is just not motivated at all to even attempt competing seriously out here. Um, the other part of me, though, is actually the opposite, where I'm super motivated and it makes me want to become national championship, uh, national champion out here in Japan to just as like kind of an F you, you know, after what all happened this year to then go and win Japan nationals, it would be, I don't know, it's motivating for me after just what all happened this year. Um, but I don't know, half of me is, you know, motivated, half of me is not. The good news is, I mean, well, not really good news actually, but the, the next, uh, the next official competitive Pokemon tournament out here might not be for another nine, ten months again. You know, assuming nothing changes, then it might be a while. And so things, you know, who knows how I'm feeling nine, ten months from now, whenever the next official tournament out here is. Um, you know, hopefully there are changes and that might make me even more motivated to compete again next year. But it's just so frustrating with Worlds being in Asia for the first time ever. And to see this is what happened across all of Asia, like Japan was a disaster, Korea was a disaster, pretty much every country out here, something went wrong um, pretty significantly. So yeah, it's just, it's really frustrating. But again, there's just, there's nothing I can do, nothing really anybody can do to fix this year. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll see what happens next year. But um, again, talking about worlds, um, I will not be commentating Worlds, uh, unfortunately. Didn't make the cut, so uh, not going to be commentating, not going to be competing. So uh, what my focus is going to be on, and this might be good news for you guys, uh, I am going to be focusing a lot more on the content side of things, um, which I actually really enjoy doing. Uh, and so the content side of things have been kind of on hold. Like I've sparsely kind of uploaded uh, a little bit the past couple of months, but my priorities have kind of been on other things, you know, I've been practicing for these uh, competitions, you know, preparing teams and everything for them. So um, now that my season is over, uh, I have, you know, a lot more time that I can spend making content uh, for YouTube, TikTok, YouTube shorts, whatever, uh, coaching, you know, all that kind of stuff I, I'm going to have more time for, which is really nice. And, you know, I also have some bigger, grander ideas for YouTube. Uh, you know, there are some things I want to try uh, on YouTube content-wise that use more of the creative side of me that I don't really get to use in a lot of other parts uh, of my life. And so, you know, it's a pretty nice outlet that makes me want to try some new things, um, new creative things that are still completely Pokemon related, but uh, just, you know, different kinds of content that I haven't made so far that I kind of want to try at some point down the line. Now, that might not be for a few months, maybe a year. I don't know yet, but I do want to focus a lot more on YouTube. And now that I might have the next nine, 10 months off of, you know, not having to prepare at all for any official competitive events, um, definitely want to focus more on YouTube. So that's the good news. Uh, at the end of all this bad news, that's the one uh, silver lining of good news, I guess. So uh, that's going to be it for the update video, guys. Uh, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Um, and if you did, make sure you subscribe. Uh, but that's it. I'll see you in the next video.